This is a demonstration of uh, avoiding dynamic and static no-fly zones um, in preparation for the Outback Challenge 2018. So I'm running the ArduPilot Software in the Loop simulator and um, I have the simulator running up in Dolby, which is the location of the Outback Challenge. Uh, this little location up here is the airport, uh, the um, uh, the local flying field that we're flying out of at Dolby. So what we've got here on the map is um, a yellow plane down here, uh, which is the plane that is flying. That's the simulated aircraft that IDU pilots flying. And then we have a whole bunch of other things on the map. Um, so we have, for example, um, some green aircraft, which uh, are simulated aircraft that IDU pilot is trying to avoid at various heights. And we have these um, red regions here, which are static no-fly zones. So they're um, regions on the map, for, for example, boundaries of farms or um, areas that the organizers have decided that we uh, can't fly over. So we have a number here of static no-fly zones, that's the red ones. And uh, I could place another one, for example, here. Uh, adding a no-fly zone, and then I could go and adjust its uh, position and size like that. And so now we've got this new oddly shaped no-fly zone. Uh, so we've also got um, yellow clouds, which are uh, short-lived weather systems, uh, which is one of the things you need to avoid in the Outback Challenge. And if you zoom out a little bit, you will see some white migratory birds, and they're represented by a picture of a swallow, and they slowly go across the landscape. You need to avoid those. And then there are some birds of prey, which is represented by the icon of a hawk. And so the hawk um, tends to circle around and then dive bomb, and you've got to make sure you, do, you don't end up underneath them. So what we've got here is the, the yellow aircraft is trying to follow this white circuit here. But so it's trying to get to this waypoint number five. And you can see here that it's decided that in order to get there, it has to dodge around this static no-fly zone. So it's gone up rather than going directly from waypoint four to five, it's automatically circled around this uh, static no-fly zone. It's gonna fly up past that area. And what I'm gonna do is just speed up the simulation a little bit so it gets to somewhere more interesting. So we're running a little bit faster. It's slightly cheating because the obstacles, the dynamic no-fly zones don't change speed when I speed up the simulation because they're externally generated. Uh, but I will slow it back down to normal speed once uh, we're in a more interesting area like now. All right, so we can see here that this little green aircraft that it's trying to avoid, uh, we can see that that's ADS-B4. Um, and that one is just doing uh, circuits up here, and that's nice and easy, easy to stay away from. And, uh, but the ArduPilot's gonna have a little bit of trouble when it comes up here. It's a rather tricky path to get from waypoint five up to waypoint two, while avoiding this large static no-fly zone. That's uh, a width of about 450 meters, so a rather large static no-fly zone. And it's also got a green plane and a, a migrating bird to worry about, plus these little no-fly zones up near home, so it can't go too far that way. And I often find during this particular test that it uh, chooses some rather interesting and sometimes terribly inefficient ways of getting to the next waypoint, but it does tend to always get there in the end. So we'll see what it does as it approaches this no-fly zone. This is all based on some extra patches on top of ArduPilot Master. Uh, and if you're interested in the patches, if you're entering the Outback Challenge, then you will uh, be able to find them in my, um, my Git repository at github.com slash trig slash ArduPilot. You can see here that it's diverting a bit to the south. And uh, now it's a bit indecisive there as to which way it's going to go. It would have made more sense to keep going up here and then head over but it's actually done a little circle, uh, which is not very efficient at all. This is a rather simplistic algorithm and it does get confused for a while sometimes. All right, so now it's decided that 
yes, it can go over this direction and it's now decided to go that nice simple route past that obstacle. I do find that it circles around sometimes quite often here. The problem is that the prediction algorithms only look forward a certain distance and the very large size of this static no fly zone causes an issue. And that's something that I'm gonna be fixing up in a future revision of this. So now it's managed to make it past this no fly zone. It always leaves at least a buffer of 50 meters and you can see it went 56 meters past that static no fly zone there. So it made it fine and now it's going to be heading down towards this one. I'll just speed up the simulation a bit again so it's uh, slightly less boring. And then I'll put it back to normal speed now and you can see that it's going to be dodging to the east of this static no-fly zone. But it's also got to worry about these fast moving aircraft that are coming in. And you can see it's a little bit indecisive, not quite sure which way to go. There you go, it's decided to go down that way and that distance there is plenty of distance. That's a distance of 272 meters, which is enough to keep it well clear of that aircraft. It can also take account of the height of the aircraft. So there it is, and it keeps going down this way. And uh, speed it up again a little bit. And when it gets down close to this obstacle, a little, it'll dodge around it again and drop the simulation speed back to a normal speed. Oh, it's actually decided to go to the west. Now, I would have thought it'd be more logical to go off to the east there, but uh, this algorithm doesn't always follow logic. And so it's a bit indecided which way. It's gonna be quite interesting watching our porter do these little loops um, as it tries to avoid these obstacles before it eventually settles on which direction to go in. I hope we can fix that to be uh, slightly less loopy in future versions of this code. Now, hopefully it will decide to turn, though it's a bit last minute, it may not make it. Uh, if it crosses, it'll keep going. Looks like it's very close. And I think it crossed there. Yes, okay, that's a failure. So that failed and it crossed at the end of that static no-fly zone probably under pressure from this fast moving uh, green aircraft up here. So that's an example where it wasn't doing the right thing. And hopefully it'll dodge around behind this migrating bird unless the height is able to, to cope with it. And could get rather interesting with this cloud down here. Looks like it is far enough away from this bird, I believe. And now it's gonna dodge around the south of this cloud. Right, anyway, that's probably enough to give you an idea. The code is only a couple of days old. Uh, I'm sure it'll improve over the next little while, um, but have a look in my Git repository if you wanted to um, see more about how this is all done.